is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right, right now. now. And good afternoon, 2.04 the time. Man, we got a ton to get to. I'm going to, a little later in the show, I'm going to take you to uh, Los Angeles. Um, the Women's March, We Hate Trump March, We Hate Conservatives March, We Hate Everything March. Um, a, a man on the street, it, it's just as good as being there. Except you don't have to make a sign in the garage. You don't have to act goofy. You can just, well, you'll see in a little bit. Also coming up. We're going to let you vote on DACA. Now, the vote's coming up. I mean, that's what ended the government. It wasn't really a shutdown. It was basically the Democrats saying, we want another Monday holiday. So that's what they got, in essence. Um, The government shut down as it, uh, hopefully you know, hopefully you know now, a government shutdown is one of those, ugh. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, You know it's that, right? Nothing, you know, the earth didn't go spinning off into the sun. We didn't, um, you know, gravitate our axis, uh, and now we're all wobbly. I mean, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Other than, what, 700,000 government employees got to stay home and watch I Love Lucy reruns, I guess. Uh, I mean, that was pretty much it. The government shutdown was, was poised to end. It was poised to end after uh, members of the Senate, they were able to break their impasse over a new short-term spending bill. And I tell you what appropriations are. That's the funding for each one of the government programs, blah, blah, blah. Um, This was uh, the phrase, much ado about nothing, could never have been manifest so well. Much ado about nothing. The Senate moved in the three-day shutdown of the U.S. government after Democrats agreed to a deal that would buy about three weeks' time for Congress to figure out what uh, you know who's on first. Uh, that's about it. Uh, the disputes over the spending and immigration, they agreed 81 to 18, I believe it was, uh, to end the debate. Um, Team Schumer said, hey, this isn't working out so well, man. This is, uh, they're blaming us. Um, it was a procedural, uh, procedural move that basically all it does is open up the way for a temporary funding plan. You know, the band-aids I took, talked about on Friday, there you go. Uh, I guess it would take it through February 8th. It's the culmination of days of deal making. Well, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, do we have that audio because it's a, uh, we don't? Okay, well, we we had some recording devices in play at the Senate, and, uh, you know, they got underway to, uh, to, well, there it is right there. This is, Here we go. Yeah, this is the Senate of the United States of America as they prepared to, uh, to get ready to do something. Yeah, and... Uh, Ring number three, you got Chucky Schumer. Who is that? Is that Pelosi with those dancing poodles? Oh, that's cute. I like that. And then, of course, in the center ring, the ringmaster is Donald J. Trump. He's just kind of looking around. Look at those elephants. Isn't that something? Yeah, this is what goes on behind closed doors at your federal government. This is what you're paying for. Yeah. It's great. Good job, guys. Good job. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, he's over there, he's in ring number one, uh, said he and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, where's Mitch? Oh, he's over there. Get him away from those lions and tigers. He didn't have any business over there. Uh, Mitch McConnell had come to an arrangement with Schumer saying he believed there was a real pathway to get a bill dealing with immigration on the floor of the Senate. Uh, So that's what this is. How do they do that? How do they swing? There's not a net underneath them at all. I'll be not. That's probably why they went ahead and passed the temporary spending bill. Uh, Nobody wants to fly in the Senate without a net, right? 
Uh, so there you go. They uh, they decided to go ahead and, and open the government back up. Oh, thank you. Thank you so very much. Because it was it was changing the, the way I lived my very life. Probably you too. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, this is the... Hillary's book entitled, What Happened? This Happened. This is what happened right here. Hillary, this is what happened. There it is. Here she comes. You know, I didn't think her neck could hold up that headdress, but she she looks great. She really does. All right. There is your United States federal government at work for you. Isn't that nice? That's great. Uh, so when your grandchildren tuddle up to your knee, Grandpa, tell me about the government shutdown. How was it really? What was it like? Well, now you can tell them. It was a circus. And a grand circus at that. Um, Senate Minority Leader Chucky e. Schumer. Boy, this guy's going to go down in infamy, isn't he? Yeah. Negotiating with the Republicans is like negotiating with Jell-O. Yeah, well, whatever that means. Well, in any case, uh, they this is this is the game they play with your do re me. That's what it is. And uh, Trump, of course, he's going to take the blame. But I have a question. I have a question, and you know what? I I don't even think you can answer this. You might be able to, but. Here's the question. This irrational hatred for Donald J. Trump. I mean, the economy is getting approval ratings from the general public. More, It's been 17 years since the American public was this charged up about the economy. 17 years. We're at a 17-year high on the economy, right? They hate this guy. They absolutely, this irrational hatred of Donald Trump. My question is, why? Why? People are back at work. Businesses are coming back to the United States. Billions of billions of dollars um, are are flowing back. uh, Look at this. We even got little dancing poodles. That's pretty good. why Why do people hate this guy so much? Can you explain this seemingly irrational hatred of Donald Trump? I I don't know that you can. I've tried. Oh, he's a racist. He's a bigot. He's a misogynist. He's he's this, and and of course now he's he's the ringleader in the sing, uh, center ring. But what is? Why do people hate this guy so much? Everything you wanted. And I'm speaking to Democrats and Republicans. Everything you wanted in the economy, it's coming. It's here. Everything you wanted in uh, unemployment numbers, it's right there. Minimum wage has been raised. Nobody even had to tell them to do it. All I had to do was give them some relief on tax reform. I mean, everything that I have heard over the course of my career about people wanting their country back, we're getting it. If we haven't got it already, so where does this 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 visceral hatred for Donald Trump come from? And I'm being quite sincere. I'm still trying to figure out why he's known as uh, the world's greatest racist. I don't get that at all. So please help me as you enjoy the the sounds and the scenes of the circus that is the federal government. Explain to me. Why there is such a visceral reaction to Donald Trump if he's doing everything everybody wanted him to do? All right, uh, 17 minutes after the hour. Welcome. Welcome the Court of Public Opinion. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. And uh, as I watch the government shut down, you know, I was paralyzed in fear. Yeah, couldn't move. Legs wouldn't work. Yeah, but thank goodness. Thank goodness uh, the government's open again. Yeah, life is back to normal. Uh, but as I watch this thing, and I'm watching Chucky e. Schumer, who has got to be, has got to be the male reincarnation of Nancy Pelosi. He's got to be. Um, 
you know, why didn't the Democrats just say, we're really tired. We need a graham cracker, some juice boxes, and a Monday off. Why didn't they just say that instead of going through all this nonsense? In any case, well, the government's opening back up because they came to an agreement. It all revolves around DACA, which I'm going to let you vote on right at the bottom of the hour coming out of the news. Um, I don't know when the Senate's going to get their ducks in a row. I'm not holding my breath. Uh, but we're going to find out from you, uh, DACA, one way or the other. Then a little later, we're going to take you li- to Los Angeles for, I'm still trying to figure out what it was, a, a women's march, a I hate m- conservatives march, a, you know, Donald Trump grabbed me to one time march. I, I, you know, just fill in the blank, make yourself happy. Um, but the question of the hour is why is there such a visceral reaction to Donald Trump? I mean, this guy sneezes and people are calling for his head on the stick. I mean, the employment's coming back, business is coming back, uh, tax reform is blanket tax reform, whether you make a little or a lot. Um, what is it about this guy that elicits such, such hatred? Is it even possible to explain this irrational hatred of Donald Trump? Why? Maybe I you know, took a nap and I will miss something. I, I, I'm not sure. Let's go to Jim and roll at, uh, roll at Jim. Thank you for waiting very much. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Rick? I'm good. Did you have a good weekend? Uh, yeah, it was passable. It was well, passable. That's good. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, people don't realize we haven't had a budget since 2009. Uh, we've been doing a, uh, what do they call them? Uh, Continuing resolutions, right. which means there's nobody keeps any track of the money. That's why we owe twenty uh, twenty trillion dollars in in debt. But I was glad to hear you playing the uh, circus music because I've had a theory for years that uh, you know the Ringling Brothers Circus used to go to Washington every year because I used to live up there and we'd go to the circus. Sure. And I think what happens is every, every, every what happened every year is the clown car got stuck and went to the wrong <laughs> parking lot, and they came out and they decided they were going to uh, take over the Capitol. So, uh, and they told their friends and other circuses that this is what they were doing. I think this is a very rational way of putting it. Why we are in the position we are right now. Well, it's. Um... You know, I am, I am, I'll be honest with you, I'm so frustrated and sick of all of it. I mean, they're playing games. If they want to play games, that's fine. You know, get out some lawn darts or something. Uh, but to do it on our dime, you know, it was bad enough we found out about a slush fund that went to pay off uh, sexual harassment claims against members of, uh, of the Senate, and it was your money. Uh, and then they turn right around. Okay, don't worry about that. Uh, we'll fix that. Don't worry about it. Look at this. And then they're going to shut the government down over DACA. I mean, I don't care what Chuck Schumer says. We're not. Uh, we're, we're not asleep anymore. We used to be, but we're not now. Oh no! And you know, and it's it's getting to the point where the you know the Russia had a very good point today. The press. How did DACA get so much political power? It, to set this, you yeah. know, to set these wheels in motion, That's a good, and he good says point. Yeah. he has said the press runs the Democratic Party, not the, you know, he says that like Schumer isn't as radical as his base and the the, the and the uh, media to which they listen. Yep, very, very, very well put, uh, Jim. I appreciate the call very much, James. James in Arlington, how you doing, James? Oh, fine, thank you. Uh, I think the biggest problem is they're afraid of him because he's just like the slush fund you mentioned. Nobody knew about that until he came along, and he tells the American people everything, everything they don't want us to know. And I think that's the main problem with them. I don't know that it's they hate him. I think they're just scared to death of him. Well, you know, I, from, I can only go from my vantage point. My vantage point, nobody's got a good word to say about this guy. If he was passing out $100 bills in front of the Capitol, somebody would find something to criticize. They just absolutely hate this guy. But why? You know, I, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I've got a couple degrees, but I don't know that that makes me any smarter than anybody else. I can generally find my way in the dark, 
But this I do not understand. Number one, I don't know why he wears the mantle of uh, world's greatest racist. Um, I, I haven't seen what he's done that is racist. Uh, number two, what, you mentioned Donald Trump and people scrunch up their face and scrunch, oh, no, I don't want to talk about him. Why? What, what has this guy ever done except give, uh, give tax reform, get the economy going again, record historic highs on the stock market, uh, people are working, keeping their homes. Uh, we're starting to get back our superpower status across the globe. People know not to mess with us anymore. Under Obama, it did, really didn't matter. All he's going to do is draw a red line, and then when you'd step over it, he'd go home. I, I mean, this guy has done every single, you know, as a talk show host, I sit behind this microphone three hours a day, five days a week, every week, every month, month after month for decades. And I hear people saying, I want my country back. I want this back. I want this back. Okay, we got it. So why do people hate this guy so much? Why? It's, I don't get it. Uh, Ron and McKinney. Ron, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Ron? Oh, I'm doing great, Rick. I always like to listen to your program. Listen, I have a very simplistic answer to the why. Okay. Donald Trump is, Donald Trump is the absolute reputation of of the shell game of politics on the national level. He, has, he is a practical man who has actually put America first, and he is showing the people of America how actually easy it is to get our country back to its healthy state by somebody who actually puts America first and does not put all the gamesmanship of politics ahead of everything else. It's like a shell game. Uh, the, the conservative liberal uh, dichotomy. This it's back actually a sort of a charade. There are some serious aspects to it, but in the overall political sense, it's a charade. The shell is under the third shell, but the gamesmanship of moving the shells back and forth and which one are you and where's the shell? The shell is in the hands of the people that play both sides that are behind the closed doors. And Donald Trump has opened the doors, put everything out in front of Twitter. And don't you think the people that have been doing that hate this man because he's actually putting America first and showing what things are really like in, in Washington. Yeah. Okay. So basically what you're saying, they don't like him um, because, well, now I'm not talking about the people in D.C. I know why they don't like him. He upsets the status quo. As you're right, he pulls back the curtain, lets people see how the sausage is made. I understand that. I'm, 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 why do voters, why do, do the American people hate this guy so much? Oh, well, it's only part of the American people that hate him. There's a whole bunch of people that love him, absolutely love him. The people that hate what Donald Trump, uh, who, who he is, is because he is so forcefully uh, in favor of those things that they hate. So it's not that they hate Trump. It's that they hate what he embodies. And it's, it's that simple. I remember I was at a, a Democratic Party uh, caucus on the uh, precinct level uh, a number of years ago, I had been invited there by a friend who just wanted me to go to his Democratic caucus. I said, listen, I'm a conservative. He said, no, I want you to go. I want you to go. And so the, uh, when I got there, the topic was about abortion on demand. Right. And the argument was for a woman ought to have the right to exercise a choice. And after I heard all of the arguments about that, I raised my hand just so I could express my opinion. And I said, I'd just like to say that a woman exercises her choice when she has sex with a man, unless it's rape. <laughs> a woman on the other side of that jumped up and started screaming at me at the top of her voice. Her eyes bulged out. Her neck popped out. Her veins bulged. Her face started turning purple, and she shouted at me in unintelligible gibberish. Why did she do that? She didn't hate me. She hated what I just said. And that's the same thing that it is with Donald Trump. When people have these entrenched feelings around certain political issues, they hate somebody that really puts their finger on it. And so that's, to me, that's the simple answer to the question. It's what he stands for. It's what he's actually doing. He's a practical man making things happen, and they don't want to shake up in the House. All right. Uh, listen, um, yeah, that makes as much sense as, as anything else. If that's the case, if that's why uh, Donald Trump is the target of such visceral reaction, such such seething hatred, uh, every time you know people see his face, then we're more divided in this country than I thought. Because I know why the people in D.C. don't like him. It's obvious. Uh, it's why 
you don't like him. 2.27 the time. We'll step aside very quickly. Uh, Clayton Neville standing by in the WBAP newsroom. Very latest breaking news. And we'll, uh, we'll check your afternoon drive as well. I'm Rick Roberts. Your call's next. All right, 2.33 the time. Well, if you haven't heard, the government's open again. Yes, that's right. The government is open again. Thank goodness. I don't know what we would have done. What, what would we have done? I have no clue. Yeah, the Senate got back together. Well, I hear they come walking through the door right now. Uh, I don't know. I guess they just play this wherever they go. The Senate. Senate Senate's here. All right. Uh, all of this, uh, which amounted to a Monday day off for about a million federal employees, was over DACA. You know, the deferred action. You know, you know about DACA. We've agreed and disagreed on DACA back and forth. You know, as, as I think about this, I wish I were there. I'd say, okay, DACA, the DACA folks, they paid a fee. You did a criminal background check, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I think it was illegal. It was an abuse of executive power from a sitting president. What about the 11 to 20 million illegals we know nothing about? How about how about them? Oh, we'll get to them, Rick. We'll get to them pretty soon. We, we got all this under control. Oh, okay. All right. That's good. Um, DACA. Uh, evidently, we opened the government back up because they both agreed tentatively They'll bring it up for a vote. I don't know what they're voting on. Uh, some people say Trump wants to give him amnesty. I think that's wrong. Um, but, you know, I think something else could be worked out. My uh, my question is, more importantly, what you think. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. Now, here's how we're going to do this. Now, you have to tally the votes, David. All right. Uh, 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Um, when it comes to the vote, I don't know what these knuckleheads in D.C. are going to do, but like I said, I'm more concerned with my audience. Yes, Rick, uh, we ought to vote to keep DACA here under X, Y, and Z. No, Rick, they need to be deported as human as soon as humanly possible um, under X, Y, Z. Very quickly, because I know we can talk about this for days, but very quickly, um, what we should do with DACA. We'll, we'll have our own informal vote, all right? That way, um, when I leave the studio tonight, I'll know just how wrong the Senate is when they come up with whatever they come up with. So um, this is your chance to vote on DACA, the thing that brought the government to a screeching halt. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, my, yes, I'm speaking with that, my tongue firmly planted in my cheek. There was no need for this. It was all a show. But uh, that aside, uh, your position on DACA, uh, get rid of them, here's why, uh, let them stay, and here's why, all right, and under what conditions. So we'll uh, we'll take your calls, do a quick informal vote on that. Uh, first, it's Terry in Weatherford. Terry, how you doing? Good, Rick. I hadn't talked to you in a while. Well, good to hear uh, from you. I just... oh, well, thank you. Um, I was just going to get back to you on that uh, about reason people hate Trump so much, you know. Uh, it's kind of like what your last caller was talking about. Everybody's been propagandized and brainwashed so much that that's the way that they believe because of generations that's, you know, brought that down. And so they don't, you know, of course, all the, you know, D.C.'s scared of them because they're afraid they're going to put people in jail because now their little crooked stuff's coming out because Hillary didn't, you know, make the make the big office there. Yeah, well, I think Hillary had a lot to do with it, but had a, I don't think she personally had a lot to do with it because she was she was horrible, uh, and people didn't right. trust her, and you know, you know she couldn't right. walk outside without getting involved in a scandal. But uh, I don't I don't think anyone ever gave Trump uh, the time of day um, for winning. No. I don't think anybody yeah. even conceived that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look at, look at the way they laughed at Kellyanne. Whenever she was saying Trump's going to win, you know, they looked at her like she was a fool, you know, <laughs> yeah, and I think, she had, I think she had the inside track on, on the word go, you know, that, that he was going to win and it just blew all of them's mind. And now, like you say, they're running like, you know, cockroaches trying to get in out of the light, trying to, you know, figure out, oh my gosh, what are we going to do now? He keeps on and more and more, all this stuff that's coming out, you know, about the, 
dossier and now about this uh, memo and all this other mess that's coming out, you know, people are, are starting to see, well, you know, golly, there was a lot of crooked stuff going on, you know, yep. and it wasn't all that that they thought it was, you know. And, and, and the, to as, make it worse, all that crooked stuff that was going on during the campaign, that's part and right. parcel for the way the government works 365 days a year. Exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah. And as far as DACA is concerned, hey, if you got some good people in there, if they've got, you know, if they've got some way to, to, to you know, follow these kids or whatever, if there's good ones like you see all over Facebook, you know, this one did this and this one did that and, you know, all this, if, if there's good ones and they're, and they're making contributions and it looks like they're going to, you know, keep making contributions and, and, and assimilate to our way of life, then keep them. But the ones that, you know, that have already got criminal backgrounds, they've already been put in jail, they're on welfare, they're, you know, they're just a drain on society, then send them back. Okay, well, I mean, that's that, one thing, Terry, that we, you know, I try, and a lot of people don't like it, you know, all you have to do is read my email. Uh, if, uh, right. if you're not a citizen, um, if, if you don't get welfare. You don't get uh, right. food stamps. You don't get that stuff. I know a lot of people right. on the radio, ah, oh, those foreigners, oh, they're over here taking all our food stamps. They don't get that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, so but, well, hold on yeah, a but, second. But, but, I want to make sure I want to make sure, David, did you get his vote? All right. All right. Good. Um, it makes sense. Makes, uh, makes sense, Terry. I appreciate it very much. Uh, you're getting to vote on DACA. Yes, let them stay under these conditions or no, line up the, the public transit buses. We'll deport them this afternoon. Um, John in Grand Prairie. John, thanks for waiting. Hey, good, af good afternoon. Can you hear me all right, I sir? got you fine. Thank you. All right. So my vote is a little bit like the prior caller. I believe in uh, allowing DACA to go forward under these conditions. Much like your prior caller said, be, they need to be uh, non-criminal um, kids, or I guess people, because they were brought here as kids. They didn't have a meaningful input into where they ended up. But you can only do that, I think, if you get other things in return, which are mainly the wall, no more chain migration, and no more visa by lottery. But I don't think realistically that you're going to be able to deport 15 to 20 million people, unfortunately. But if you give amnesty to those 15 to 20 million and don't put the wall up, you're going to get another 25 to 50 million trying to come in illegally as an incentive. Yeah. You have to have the wall. You have to end chain migration, have to end visa lottery. And that I, I can't fault the kid. People come over as an infant. It's hard to say that they're to blame. Adults, I'm, I'm fine with blaming them. What we do with the people, the 15 to the 20 million that are here, I can't give you a good answer on that. But I can tell you I'm willing to give on dock if I get those three other things. Wall, no more chain migration, and no more lottery by visa. All right. Did you, did you get that, David? All right. We got it. I appreciate uh, your vote. Hopefully, a member or two of the Senate um, will be listening via our app and say, oh, so that's what the American people want. Uh, very seldom is what we want uh, reflected in the votes in Washington. Um, all right, let's go to, uh, where am I going? Uh, Jared in McKinney. Jared, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Jared? Well, good afternoon, Rick. I'll be really brief so you can get to other callers, but I think what we really need to do is use this as an opportunity to expose what was really going on. Offer DACA under conditions of A, build the wall, cease all visas and immigration for a period of 10 to 20 years so we can get a control on this and secure our borders. If this is something that's agreeable to Congress and the president, then it shows that we really want to do keep these dreamers here. Otherwise, it's something else is going on and uh, we have deeper issues. Well, very well put, because anytime. Uh, Washington comes out with a statement or a policy or a guideline, you always have to read between the lines because there's generally another reason that they're doing it. Um, and, and that's what I hate. Uh, well, I deal with it every day, having to, you know, vet stories and prepare for the show. Well, this is what they said, but what do they mean? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, I think um, that's a very good call. Very good call. All right. Um, I know the lines are full. We'll, uh, we'll get to each and every one. Your chance to vote on DACA. Um, we will uh, do that next. 2.43 the time. Let's check that afternoon drive. It's, uh, I guess uh, there's a fire alert uh, in several places. We'll find out about that and take your calls next.
All right, 2.49 the time. In the middle of a, a vote, no, 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 it's not a Senate vote. Um, if it were, in fact, a Senate vote, uh, you'd, you would have heard, you know, their, their, their song. And it, um, it goes with them everywhere, evidently. Yeah, yeah, there's the Senate for you. Instead, the people that really matter, the voters of America, the, you, know, you know the people that pay for everything, that's you and your neighbor, not the Senate, not the Congress, not, no, you. The people that pay for everything and have to live with the, the legislation these goobers come up with. Um, evidently, the government's no longer shut down. Hopefully, uh, you haven't been medicated under a doctor's uh, orders and sent to bed because you were so depressed. Um, it was basically a nothing. A nothing. What, what was the term used during the campaign? A nothing burger? Well, if you ever saw a nothing burger, it would look like this so-called government shutdown. Uh, in any case, we're letting you vote on DACA. Senate guys, you, why don't you sit down? Let the people talk. All right. Thank you. Um, we're taking your calls. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Uh, yes, uh, the DACA people can stay under these conditions, A, B, C, D, E. No, they can't stay. Uh, I don't care what. I don't care if they were uh, six months old. It's still illegal. Um, whatever. Uh, and we're keeping a tally. All right. And I'll give you the tally at the top of the hour. Let's go to Dennis. Dennis, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Dennis? Hey, pretty good, Rick. I've been listening for oh, probably somewhere around since 2014 or 15, and I'm actually a former Democrat. I changed um, last year. I actually voted for Obama. Wow! The first two times, believe it or not. I'm Do you have any friends that. left? Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, my thoughts on the uh, on the DACA thing is. I just had one thing, and I'll let you go and let you talk about it. Is how about if if we give uh, if we were to give the DACA kids a way a path to citizenship? That's fine with me as long as they're clean and they're doing okay. And even all the illegals that are here besides them. But if we just put one stipulation on that, which would be they don't get to vote in our country. I wonder if the Democrats would still care about them the same as they do now. No, they wouldn't care about them at all. (laughs) I just really feel like the voter base is all they're trying to do. They don't care. They know that they can't win over the American people anymore, so they're just trying to build a new voter base of other people. (laughs) Well, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, it's, uh, it's crazy. Uh, Democrats want illegals to create new voting blocks. Republicans, some Republicans want illegals, um, for the cheap labor, um, for big corporate donors. I mean, nobody's uh, pure as the driven snow in this. You know what I mean? Yes. So uh, as far as the DACA people go, let them stay if they can pass, um, pass. Well, let me tell you how this works. Uh, I hear it all the time. Well, I heard on so-and-so show that uh, DACA people can get welfare. Or I heard, and I know most of the people that they're citing. I mean, they're pretty intelligent. Um, some of them are national, and maybe they slipped or something. You know, but, um, and well, there was one in particular, and I won't point out the host name, um, that uh, basically claimed that uh, DACA, the Obama-era immigration program grants recipients access to federal benefits. Well, they can participate in Social Security and Medicare, but what's that require? you got to sign up. Now we know who you are. You see what I'm saying? Um, and lower-income DACA recipients may claim a major tax credit, but they're still ineligible for most forms of welfare, including food stamps and Medicaid. So... You know, let's not do like the Democrats, tell you part of the truth. What was it that one guy told me, uh, telling a half-truth is a whole lie? Uh, I mean, that's a great term. I hadn't heard that before. Uh, So, yeah, they can participate in Social Security and Medicare, but they're not eligible for most forms of welfare, including food stamps, Medicaid. Um, Just they don't get it. 
So if we're going to be against something, let's be against something factually, not based on innuendo and, well, so-and-so said. You follow what I'm saying? Does that make sense? All right. I got too many people that want to vote. Uh, I'm going to extend this. after uh, We're going to go to Clayton Neville in the WBAP newsroom. Lots of uh, breaking news. Also going to check the afternoon drive. Then when we come back, we'll uh, let you continue to vote. Yes, DACA can stay. No, they got to go. And briefly, why? And that way, hopefully, hopefully the Senate can uh, can figure out what they need to do. What they want to talk? The Senate wants to talk again? No, I, I don't think so. I don't. I think we've heard all we want to hear from them, don't we? Oh, they are. Well, see, just like a bit bad penny, those those senators keep showing up. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen, your United States Senate. is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right, right now. now. All right, uh, four minutes after the hour, 3.04 the time. Um, the Senate, <laughs> uh, their vote clears the way. I'm sorry, I can't do this with a serious face because it's, it's such a sham. The government shutdown is, uh, is ending after members of uh, the Senate were able to break their impasse over a new short-term spending bill after working through the weekend. Working through the weekend. These guys go on recess more often than elementary school kids in the course of a week. Uh, They worked tirelessly through the weekend. Who was it that was uh, on the, I can't think of his name, it wasn't Schumer, the guy in the orange baseball cap that was all over news? Well, as you can see, I'm not wearing a shirt and tie. I'm working through the weekend. Well, good for you. Uh, The Senate moved to end the three-day shutdown. After uh, Democrats agreed to a deal that would buy almost three weeks' time for Congress to figure out DACA. That's what it's about. The Democrats wanted to shut things down. They did it. All right? Now, the question is, when will the vote come on DACA? You know, I think they ought to put it up for a public referendum, a national referendum. You know, let Senate let the Senate uh, continue their recess You know, play on the monkey bars or teeter-totters or whatever they want to do. As you can tell, I'm not uh, enthralled with the Senate right now. Um, And by the numbers, the approval numbers, neither are you. Um, Let them take the time off. Put it up for a national referendum. How about that? Then they can find out what the voters really think. All right. We're taking a vote. Uh, Yes, DACA um, people can stay under X, Y, and Z. Or no, they can't stay, and here's why. Very briefly, all right? And I'll get through as many of your calls as I can. And, David, you are uh, keeping tally on this, are you not? Uh, what, where, where do we stand right now where, as we get ready to go into another voting round? I feel like Pat Sajak. You want a knee? You want to buy an O? Okay. Uh, go ahead. All right, right now we have six votes yes to keep them. And right now we have 12 votes. No, they cannot stay. Okay, we're taking your calls and tallying them. So six, they can stay. Twelve, got to go. That's it? That's where we are? Uh, yes, sir. And we have some more. All right. Well, And I'm also getting a, a list of why they can stay okay. and why they can't. Very good. All right, let me get to your to calls. Uh, let's go to Chris in Dallas. Chris, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Chris? I'm good. Thank you for taking my call. Rick. I just wanted to be a fact check a little bit. Uh, the illegals do get uh, Medicaid. Uh, we give it to them every single day. I volunteer at an organization that uh, helps people, and the Medicaid uh, personnel show up at our nonprofit, and they give out uh, Medicaid to illegals every day. It's called CHIP, para, uh, CHIP program, and that is illegal. It uh, is illegal. On- it's absolutely yeah. illegal. No, 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 no. It's legal that that they we, we do them at this location. I won't say where, but uh, dozens a day, uh, th- thousands a year, and other organizations that volunteer the same way I do do the same thing. Are you aware? 
are you aware that it is against federal law to allow an illegal alien uh, to take part in food stamps, welfare, Medicaid? Are you aware of that? I, I Oh, sure. I, I'm aware of it, but I'm just letting you know the practicality. It is they are getting benefits uh, as easy as walking in and asking for them. Don't you, th- don't you think given- you— don't you think you should probably report that? Oh, uh, we have, and and when they do, they send out a uh, another agent to help with the volume. What? Because of the volume number of people that are coming in requesting it, they don't come out to shut it down. They come out to increase the volume. And what is the name of your program? Well, uh, the, the name of the program that the uh, bureaucrats are using to get benefits for the illegals is called chip c h i p chip okay Okay. and that is designed specifically for illegals if you ask the medicaid officer that's what he's going to tell you all right so you you do know that it is against federal law to allow a non-citizen to take part in medicaid oh yeah but uh who who is uh staying by the the rule of law these days and and everywhere I look, people are violating the law. And I just I just heard that uh, don't worry about it. These DACA kids, don't worry about. It. They're not getting any benefits. Well, no, they are. They're getting a lot of benefits. Uh, n- not even to mention of the free schooling that they're getting. And what does it cost? Ten thousand, twelve thousand a year for school. So they're getting school also. And if their parents brought them here, okay, uh, then their parents are here still illegally. When we deport the parents, we are big on families. We want to keep families together, so we should keep the children and the family unit with their parents. Who on earth would want to separate their kids from their parents? Now, you, so do, we, you, do, you do know that CHIP is uh, the Children's Health Insurance Program. You know that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, know, yeah, yeah I know what it is. Sure. Okay. And you know that it is separated um, from Medicare. Do you, are you aware of that? Yes. Okay. So and it's separate from Medicaid also. Yes. But it's a separate, want, it, it, well, let right. me, let me finish. Uh, okay. so, so to say, well, they're getting Medicare, they're getting Medicaid is not entirely true. Okay. Uh, then if they go down to Parkland and want to have an anchor baby here, all we are paying all of their medical bills, and it's, uh, when you ask the Parkland administrator or any hospital, they said, yes, we get reimbursed from the federal government through CHIP. Okay, but you understand it's not Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, to, to be— Well, uh, no, I, I'm trying to be factual yeah, but, here because you yeah. called up by saying they are getting Medicaid, or excuse me, Medicare, uh, at, uh, through private programs. And it's not the same thing. You will you okay. will admit that. That's true. And if, if that was what the call screener heard me say, then I apologize. What I'm saying is that when it was said they get no benefits, that's, I guess, more accurate. Say, yes, they do get benefits. The name of the benefit is called CHIP, and it mirrors Medicaid. Okay. Here's here One in nine Texans um, is not a U.S. citizen. So I guess you would say they're not Texans. Um, they don't record which of those 2.9 million non-citizen residents are here lawfully. They should, but they don't. Uh, the best estimates are about 60% or more lack legal status. Of the 5 million uninsured, about 1.6 million were non-U.S. citizens. Um, even those who are lawfully present are not eligible for public health insurance on the same terms as a U.S. citizen and options uh, for undocumented uh, undocumented residents are especially limited. CHIP happens to be one of them. It's a children's program. Um, And if Congress doesn't fund it, it it doesn't run. It's just that simple. So, where are we still? It's still illegal under federal law to allow a non-citizen to participate in Medicare or Medicaid. Um, There are all kinds of programs that float around out there uh, about uh, uh, legal immigrants. We all know that. I'm simply giving you what the law says. 
not those that choose to skirt the law for profit. Um, and in some cases, these are these are nonprofits. Um, you know, providing health care to undocu- uh, undocumented immigrants in Texas is uh, is what's going on, despite continued growth of uh, this population. Well, you can go back to 2013. They've made it more difficult for states to provide adequate and cost-effective care. That's according to the Democrats. And my question is, well, where is it written we're supposed to do this? I mean, emergency care, of course, yes. Um, But as this population grows and gets older, uh, Texas doctors and healthcare administrators and even legislators are going to be facing some kind of challenge. Um, so your CHIPS program, I understand its existence, but it's not the same as Medicare and Medicaid. Okay, I spent way too much time on one call. Let me take a, a quick break, check the afternoon drive, and I'll blast through your calls as quickly as I can. you have a total for me? Yes, I do. Right now we are sitting at 14 to 7, uh, no, they cannot stay. 14 to 7, no, they can't stay. All right. Um, if you want to vote on DACA, something the, uh, the Senate seems to have a, a lot of problems doing, uh, just give me a call. Yes, they can stay under these conditions, X, Y, Z. Uh, no, they can't stay. Load them up. Uh, let's go. All right? That's what we'll do. 1-800-288-9227. 1-800-288-WBAP. Your call straight ahead. All right, uh, 318 the time, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. We're going to take you uh, to Los Angeles, let you immerse you. Uh, You saw the women's marches, uh, Los Angeles and Dallas and Chicago and New York, and um, a lot of those marches had to do with Trump. Um, unfortunately, we'll, uh, we'll let you hear from some of those people in just a little bit. But first, uh, if you want to vote on DACA, something the Senate just has a difficult time trying to wrap its head around, I guess. Uh, but we've got such a mess when it comes to immigration, uh, in this country. I don't even know where you start, but they're supposed to, that's what they're getting paid for. Uh, if, uh, if you want to vote, uh, yes, uh, let DACA recipients stay again, We're talking about DACA. They paid a fee. They went through a criminal background check. Uh, They can't uh, have any any crime in their background. As a matter of fact, if you're a DACA participant, uh, you can be deported for just being arrested, not even convicted. Uh, So personally, as an immediate issue, I'm less worried about the people we know about than I am about the 11 to whatever it is, 20 million illegals that live in the United States that we know nothing about. You know, drug smugglers and MS-13 and gangbangers and people of that nature. You know, what's this? If the Senate can't figure this out when they've got all the information, how are they going to figure out what to do with all the other illegals? You got me. But like I said, you're uh, paying their salary. They're supposed to come up with something. They're not supposed to be throwing little fits, um, Republicans and Democrats, and shutting down the government such as it was. All right. Yes, DACA people can stay under these conditions. No, they got to go, and here's why. Uh, Ted in Plano. Ted, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it very, very much. How you doing, Ted? Hey, I'm doing awesome, Rick. It's good to talk to you again. Thank you. I want to get in on this wing of uh, yes or no. So uh, my, my opinion is, uh, now that you've explained a little bit to me, uh, if they, you know, could get registered and everything, uh, I might be willing to give them a chance. But with uh, everything that's happened and me being a veteran and uh, stuff like that and, and the way Congress has shut down the government for this whole ordeal, it really pisses me off, you know, that they're doing all this. And uh, really makes it hard for us to, as citizens, because my son – went to school and hardly none of the children there wanted to learn English, didn't hardly didn't know, no English. And it's just, you know, it frustrated him and it frustrates us as Americans when we have to ask for a Spanish speaking associate when you work for a whatever store. Right. No, I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't speak Spanish. 
um, and I don't want to learn it, and I shouldn't have to in the United States. Um, exactly. I, I don't and know. I, if- I, I had jobs demand that I learn Spanish to get along with the Spanish-speaking associates or quit. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd find that pretty tough to swallow. Um, you know, it was bad enough. You know, I used to fly from here to San Diego every 10 days uh, because I broadcast it out of there. Um, and, you know, you have to learn Spanish. Uh, uno momento, por favor. Um, hmm, let's see. Uno um, grande uh, Pepsi. Okay, now I just got fed. Uh, but, I mean, that's it's ridiculous. It, and it's all political. It's all political. I mean, who among us? is going to begrudge a small child a sandwich if they're starving. That's not what this is about. This is about Democrats uh, whose whole platform is, you know, how much stuff can I give you from the government? Well, that's fine if you got your own stuff, but the government can't give anyone anything without first taking it from someone else. It's called redistribution of wealth program. Well, there's a great government program. Oh, okay. So they took money from taxpaying citizens uh, to turn around and give it to somebody else. That's the Democrats platform on everything. What can the government do for you? Well, see, I want less government. I want smaller government. I want government kept in check, held to accountability. And you're not going to do that without uh, without term limits. You're just not. Uh, otherwise, it's a blank check. It's you, Basically, everybody in D.C. is using somebody else's ATM card, uh, which is one of you. All right. Appreciate the call very much, Ted. Let's go to Red Red uh, in Blooming Grove. Red, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Hello. Good afternoon, Mr. Roberts. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. How are you doing, sir? I'm well, thanks. Uh, the uh, question that I had was, how long does it take for an immigrant to be legal in the United States, I mean, on average, how long does it take for that process to to go through? Man, I you know I never thought about that. Well, and then the next question I asked was, uh, how long has the DACA people been here? And uh, the the feller on the other end of the line said that it was about twenty years. Uh, oh, uh, say that again. Uh, the DACA people. Right. How long have they been here? Well, how, how long have they been here? Well, are you, are you talking about what Obama did, or you t- or going back to '96, or, or what do you mean? Or whenever the program got started, roughly how long has the DACA plan been in in place? Well, it hasn't been in place. Well, uh, it goes back to '96 with a five-year waiting period, but th- it wasn't called DACA then. I mean, the Dreamer programs came about uh, under Obama. Um, I mean, if, if you're looking for, you know, who started this mess, um, it goes back to the early nineties. You know, there are a lot of ways to immigrate to the United States. Um, and each one has a different timeline. If you, if you're the immediate relative, like a, you know, the chain migration, for example, you may be able to secure a green card, you know, pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, that's because there's no limits on the number of immediate relatives who can receive green cards. That should change. Uh, generally, if you fit into one of the categories, well, the categories are if you're a child, 21 years of age, uh, or a, of a U.S. citizen, um, you are in the first preference, first category. Uh, that can wait. Uh, that wait can be up to six years. Um, if you're the child or spouse of a green card holder. Uh, you're in the second preference category, and that wait can be five to ten years. If you're married to the uh, a married child of a U.S. citizen, um, that wait can be about eight years. So I'm, when they say immigration reform, I foolishly assumed back in the 90s this is what they were talking about. Uh, you know, waiting ten years to be legal is quite a while. Uh, if you're the sibling of a U.S. citizen, you're in the fourth preference, and several things can affect that waiting time. Um, I mean, it's all over the board. So that's when they say immigration reform, I assume that's what they were talking about. That's not. They're talking about amnesty. Okay. Well, uh, okay. So if they've had the time to become legal and they haven't done it yet, I think they should go. Okay. So if they're if they're through their waiting period, um, 
they should be deported. That's why if well, they're through their waiting period and haven't uh, made any headway as far as getting that done, right? Yes, sir. Well, and you know, I, it was like the guy that was uh, deported. For, what was it Michigan or Minnesota, whatever it was last week? Been here thirty years. That seems to me to be plenty of time. That is, uh, yes, that is plenty of time. Uh, I mean, I'm, of course, you know, they were reporting on it like, oh my God, he's the father of this many kids and all this other. You know, those are peripheral issues. Important, certainly, to he and his family. But thirty years and you haven't done anything. Come on. Uh, if you really wanted to do it right, you should have done it right. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying, and it, it makes okay. sense. It, it, it's trying to get these 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 people in D.C. Uh, to to separate everything from politics. Um, you know, I, I mean, to try and do something legitimate with immigration reform. You know, DACA, uh, that's kind of the new spin on an old problem. Um, you know, it allows some individual, or did allow, some, because DACA doesn't qualify. You don't qualify for DACA now. Um, if you enter, entered as a minor, um, and it was a renewable two-year period of deferred action from deportation. Um, I mean, it's it goes back to, we've had this problem for a long, long time. And nothing seems to be working out. Uh, they considered it back in 2011. They came close then. Uh, it passed the, uh, passed the House but didn't get the 60 votes needed. So then it came up again in 2013. But we've been dealing with this, uh, not under this name, but dealing with this since 96. Um, listen, I appreciate the call very much. Let me step away. Clayton, uh, Clayton Neville standing by in the WBAP newsroom, the very latest breaking news. And we'll check that afternoon drive and right back to your calls in the court of public opinion. Um, if we still have a few votes, I want to get them in before we do a final tally. All right. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. I'm Rick Roberts. You're in the court of public opinion on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 3.33 the time. How you doing? Doing pretty good for a Monday? It's a good day. Feels like a good day, even for a Monday. Um, of course, um, you will be. You can come out of your bomb shelters now, all of you that have been uh, underground since the, uh, since the government shut down, because I guess uh, they've decided, well, they're going to stop playing their silly game. The, uh, uh, yes, the, uh, the Senate has, uh, well... We're hard working through the weekend for the American people, and you know, there they are. Yeah, you got them. It's the, ladies and gentlemen, the federal government of the United States of America working tirelessly through the weekend to avert the shutdown. Well, it's open again. It's open, everybody. Hey, guess your weight for a dime. All right. Okay. Uh, it's uh, the government shutdown that wasn't. All right, over DACA. You know, they can say whatever they want to, but it was over DACA. And, you know, while we're focused, they've got us all focused on DACA. You, you follow me? We're all focused. Yeah, what about those DACA folks? Uh, it, you know, they paid a fee. They went through a criminal background check. Uh, they can't get in trouble. They can get deported for just being arrested, not even <laughs> convicted. Uh, they're still not citizens, so they don't get welfare, food stamps, um, Medicare, Medicaid, that kind of thing. Uh, it's a problem, yes, I'll give you that, because it arose out of an abuse of executive power by a sitting president. But what about the 11 to 20 million we don't know about? MS-13 gang members, drug smugglers, human traffickers, those are the people I'm concerned about. If the Senate shuts down the government, um, the Republicans and Democrats, you too, uh-uh, you first. You know, I mean, if they go back and forth, if they can't even deal with what we know about, how are they going to deal with the others? And, and by the way, I, I did some checking for that one call. DACA, well, the DREAM Act, it was an acronym for Development Relief and Education for Alien Minors Act. Um, it was an American legislative proposal. For, it was in three phases, three or four, uh, for qualifying alien minors in the United States that would, uh, you know, first give them 
residency under certain conditions if they met all the qualifications and then eventually permanent residency. The bill was first, even though it, it came from an act five years earlier um, in 96 or 97, uh, it was first introduced in the Senate uh, by uh, Dick Durbin and I can, don't remember the other per. Well, it was Hatch. That's who it was, Orrin Hatch. Uh, Republican and a Democrat. It was uh, introduced in the Senate uh, in 2001, so 17 years ago. It's uh, been introduced at least three times that I know of, maybe more, but it's failed uh, to pass in each one of those things until, of course, until the circus came to town and Obama decided to, uh, okay, well, this sounds pretty good to me, yeah. Uh, in any case, we're, we're dealing with this right now. So the Senate hasn't voted yet. I don't know if they're going to get together for a martini over at the Capitol Grill and figure out what they're going to do about it. But in the meantime, the people that really count, you, because you're paying for all this. Um, what do you say? Yes, DACA can stay under this uh, condition and that. Or no, they got to go. All right? And we're going to... We're going to go ahead and take a few. I mean, the lines are just jammed, and I want to get your your vote in here uh, because at the end of the day, your vote means a lot more than, you know, the knuckleheads in D.C. Barry in Dallas. Barry, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Barry? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I appreciate you taking my call. Uh, you know, uh, I was shocked to get through, but it was good to talk to you, and I just wanted to let you know that I, I vote no, they can't stay. You know, we're a, a nation of laws, and uh, – the immigration laws really haven't changed. If you're here illegally, the penalty is deportation, and that's what we need to adhere to. So just so I'm clear, uh, they have to be deported even though a sitting president, not for one, two, three, four, but eight years, decided to ignore that. Well, he ignore, ignored quite a bit in the Constitution, but he also ignored the immigration law. You're saying because of that, uh, that's not a mitigating factor, and they got to go. You know, my mother always told me ignorance of the law is no excuse. If it, just because he decided to not adhere to it doesn't mean it's not a law and it has to be adhered to. And I did want to, you know, uh, disagree with you a little bit. I looked up some of the regulations, and it's they, they can have arrest on the record and still qualify for DACA. They just can't have a felony or it says serious misdemeanor or more than three misdemeanors. So they can be criminals and no, still get they, DACA. They, they are subject to deportation. Uh, under uh -huh. felonies or three misdemeanors, and they don't have to have convictions under any of those. Okay. So they can still have three misdemeanors and still, or no, not more than three misdemeanors. No, they, they, they can get a, arrested for shoplifting and not convicted, mm -hmm. and they're subject to deportation. Okay. okay I well, mean, I, mean I, know, I know what you're talking about because I've read it myself. Um, and the whole purpose of the DACA program was to make sure we didn't import criminals or that they didn't display criminal behavior while, the, while they were here. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the fact is, uh, the fact that we can uh, give consequence to an arrest instead of conviction is obvious. We couldn't do that if you were a U.S. citizen, obviously. Uh, but if you're not a U.S. citizen, you can just be arrested for a misdemeanor and be subject, not that it's going to happen, but you can be subject to deportation. Sure. That, it, yeah, I agree with that 100%. Uh, I was just, when I was reading through that to apply for DACA, not necessarily, you know, obviously if you're arrested for, for a crime, you certainly can be deported, but to apply for it, you could have still have a criminal record and still apply for it. Uh, yeah, but good. you're you not going to get what I've read. Yeah, but you, I mean, <laughs> you can if you have a criminal background check, and mm -hmm. which all of the DACA participants, I am told, all the DACA participants have had, you can't qualify for the DACA program unless you have a clean record. You can apply to it okay. all day long, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean you're going to be approved. Okay. Well, that makes sense. You know, I, I certainly uh, you appreciate uh, the information. Yeah, I mean, look, um, I, I guess the biggest problem that people have with my position on DACA is um, I know where the DACA people are. They're either, uh -huh. you know, a few of them are in the military, not a lot. Um, they also have to be in school uh, or have received a GED, an equivalency. I know where these people are. 
you know, I'm not concerned about them. Well, I mean, that's why I couldn't figure out why did we shut the government down over this? What about the millions of illegals that we know nothing about that could be a threat to you or your family, me and my family, uh, the economy itself, certainly the nation if they're terrorists? What about them? If these, if these idiots in D.C. can't even figure out what to do with DACA, is there any hope for us as far as the other millions are concerned that we know nothing about? That, that concerns me. Our, our politicians of late have seriously, I, I don't even know if I could you know, use the language on the radio, but seriously have disappointed me in the direction uh, that they've been proceeding lately. I, I find it uh, pretty incompetent on their part. Absolutely. Uh, I, w- I would, I would, uh, I would second that, and I would call them non-representing representatives, and they need to go. <laughs> I agree with that. I think uh, I will certainly look at a little more closely who I vote for in 2018. Oh, man, that does my heart good to hear that. Barry, I appreciate the call very, very much. Uh, Let's go to Wanda in Lake Worth. Wanda, or excuse me, Wanda. How are you doing, Wanda? I'm doing great. Listen, I hear all the time about the poor parents are separate from their children. And because we are a country, are supposed to be a country of law and order, what about the children that are separate from their parents when they go to prison? They're separated from their parents. So should we just say, well, you know, you don't have to go to prison because it's just not right. Okay, wait a second, Juana. I'm lost here. What are you saying? If you break the law, they want to send the DACA people back and if they're, because they don't want to separate them from their parents, right? Well, that's that's what they that, you know that's not okay. true. I mean, but, if you're six months old and your parents take you someplace, you know I can't really fault the six month old. But uh, the parents certainly broke the law. Yeah, right. But I, it's still breaking the law, and we have laws in this country. So if they're upset because the parents broke the law, and it's just not right to separate the kids from the parents, what about? the parents who were in prison because they broke the law and they were separated from their children well i i don't know uh wanda i mean that's a hypothetical that i don't know from you know how significant that is i mean if you brought your kids over here from mexico or latin america anywhere when they were six months old uh i'm not going to lay the sins of the father at the feet of the kid uh, but by the same token that that argument well you're separating families no i'm not I'm simply following the rule of law, and if uh, you know if one's a citizen through a misinterpretation of the Fourteenth Amendment, and one is not and has to be deported, um, you know that's that you know that's the result of an act, not my act, their act. Exactly, and that's why people are in prison without their kids because it results of the parents breaking the law. Well, yeah, so- but usually, I mean, if you're an American citizen and you're in prison. And, you know, very seldom is a, I mean, if there's a father and a mother, you know, I guess sometimes they go to prison together, but uh, there's a grandparent or some other family member takes care of the kid. And, you know, that situation doesn't exist if you're not from this country. But, I, you know, honestly, I don't even know what the, I don't even know if the numbers are significant enough to even try to track that data. But I follow what you're saying. Uh, David, that goes down as one against, I think, because I, I know what she said. I don't know if it applies necessarily, but I get what she's saying. Wanda, I appreciate the call. 344 the time. Let's take a look at that afternoon drive, see if those fire alerts have gone down. And I'll come back. I'll tell you what. I'll take, I'll take your votes until the top of the hour. And then I have to take you to L.A., all right, uh, to the Women's March this weekend. Did you march in the women's March? David, did you march in the Women's March? No, I don't know where it was. Well, I looked all over and I couldn't in, find it. Was it was in Dallas. I couldn't find a thing to wear. You didn't go either. No, Randy? I couldn't find a thing to wear. I well, didn't have a pink hat either. No, see, now, now you're just be now you're being uh, uh, you're being sexist. You didn't. I asked Randy if he went to the women's march. What did he say? He didn't have a thing to wear. That's a stereotype. That's wrong. You can't be doing that. I'm a single guy. My laundry was dirty. Besides that, you look good in anything. So Stop there you it. go. There. All right. Three forty-five. The time. Your call. Straight ahead. All right, uh, 3.52 the time. Want to get right to your calls. Yes, the DACA folks can stay. No, they can't. Uh, The topic that shut down a government for 72 hours. And I seriously hope you didn't suffer any personal loss. Um, All right, let's go to uh, Gene in Temple. 
Gene, thanks for waiting. How are you doing, Gene? I'm doing well, thank you. I uh, was going to talk and vote to uh, no, they can't stay, but you opened up another can of worms when you said those idiots in Washington. That's a whole week worth of <laughs> conversation and everything. Though I am never going to vote for John Cornyn again. He's, oh, gosh, dog. But anyway, you ask about DACA, two words and one idea comes to mind. Two words, consistency and illegal, Rick. First off, consistency in administering the laws. If we make a left-hand or right-hand turn here in Temple at this horrible construction that's come up on us, we make a left-hand or right-hand turn at one of the busiest intersections in this town, we're going to get a ticket. Now, where's the consistency that we're going to get a ticket if we make an illegal turn, but yet these illegal people can stay because someone else decided that, well, we're going to choose to ignore this law. Where is it for me, the common law-abiding citizen, where is the consistency that, that I start wanting to ignore the laws? Well, politics transcends uh, legality. If you had Obama... Who wants to make the law? You know, if you had Barack Obama as police chief in Temple, oh, you, could, you could drive however you wanted to drive and it'd be fine. I guess so, but that's not the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> the second thought I had was reciprocity. If we were to go to Mexico we wouldn't even be having this conversation. I would be out of the country in a heartbeat if I was there illegally. If not in prison. If I wanted to go buy some property on the beach. I'm, I, maybe I'm a successful person. I want to go buy beachfront property. I'd be stupid to do it because I'd have to worry every day, is they going to nationalize my property or take it away because I'm not an American? Well, secondly, I couldn't buy it because I'm not a Mexican citizen. That's right. You can so, lease it for 99 nine years, but they can come take it any time they want. So where is the consistency? Where is my incentive to obey the laws when the politicians want to do it? And there's some good politicians up there, Mr. Gomer. But uh, Ted, I mean, oh, gosh, now I'm so frustrated. John Cornyn is so self-serving and so centered. And here's that arrogant Mitch McConnell saying, oh, well, yes, ma'am, we have term limits. It's called elections. Well, oh, elect his sorry hide oh, out of there. Oh. They're so arrogant. Pelosi. The, oh, Sheena Jackson Lee. I feel sorry for the folks in Dallas, except they voted her in. You know what? You know who's moving to Temple? No, please. Who? Maxine Waters. Oh, you got no, no, no. <laughs> let me let me. Let me see, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving. I'm moving from Temple. Someone want to pay my ticket? Let me ask you something, Gene. What are you going to do to decompress after this phone call? Oh well, my friends will tell you. I I have to go into decompression about once ever three hours. All right. Well, that that's good, Gene. Uh, from Temple, Texas, we appreciate the call. Got to step aside. Uh, Clayton Neville standing by in the WBAP newsroom. Very latest breaking news. We'll check that afternoon drive. Um, man, uh, yeah. if you're on hold, I'll give you your day in the court of public opinion. I, I promise you that. Your call straight ahead. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, four minutes, four minutes after the hour. You want to take a couple more votes? Okay, uh, the voting stops with uh, these calls, all right, because otherwise I'd be here all day. Uh, and I want to take you to L.A. for the Women's March, so let me get these votes in very quickly. Uh, yes, DACA folks can stay under these conditions. No, they can't stay. Um, you know, who knows what D.C. is going to do? Um, you know, they're still trying to figure out what to have for lunch tomorrow, I think. Well, uh, that looks good. Well, now then again, that would be better for my cholesterol. I, you know, I'm so sick of dealing with these guys. Uh, Doug and Terrell. Doug, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Doug? I'm doing just fine. Rick, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I was just wondering, uh, I've been hearing 800,000 uh, 800, of DACA's uh, children. Is it now... My understanding, three point two million. Uh, where'd you hear that? Well, I've heard it on the radio. Okay, well, three point two million of them. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, first of all, 
children is a misnomer. DACA recipients are generally, you know, 25 and below. Uh, so quite a few of them are in their 20s. Trump did say he's heard varying numbers on the DACA, DACA population from 650,000 to 3 million. Uh, the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services said there were 689,800, not quite 700,000, active DACA recipients as of September 4th, 2017, about three or four months ago, right? Um, okay. Now, well, why is, uh, you know, why, is, why is this different? Well, uh, who's eligible? Well, we know who is eligible based on when they were born and when, when they came here and all of that. Uh, so why is there a difference in numbers? Well, those who were approved didn't gain lawful status. Uh, they just, you know, got a reprieve from being deported. Um, 800,000, that's the total number of people who have ever been approved for doc. And again, you know, the government could be lying to me. It wouldn't be the first time, but this is from the Immigration Service. Um, right. They say 800,000 is the total number of people who have ever been approved for DACA since it was launched in t- uh, late 2011, early 2012. Technically, the number is just under 800, uh, about 798,000. That's according, okay. again, to figures from U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Nearly 72,000 of them were denied, so that's what happened to some. Uh, that number, 689,000, that was of as of September 4th, um, last year. So uh, that was the day before the Trump administration entered the program. So, and I'm know, wondering too, I, I'm wondering too, how many of those are actually on un, the unemployment line? Well, what happened to the rest <laughs> of the cumulative DACA approvals? Like, well, 70,000, maybe 80,000 either didn't, didn't renew because the, the DACA status has to be renewed and you have to pay another fee. Uh, they either didn't renew or had their renewals rejected. Um, you know, about 50,000 became uh, lawful permanent residents that obtained green, car- uh, green cards. Um, DACA didn't approve a path to legal status, but uh, if you look at it that, uh, those living in the country illegally could gain legal status by marrying, uh, marrying an American citizen or a lawful permanent resident. So... Uh, you know, that's how it all boils down. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know where the three million came from. As a matter of fact, the White House was even asked where the president got that figure, um, but they didn't have an answer for that. So it's, I would, I'd put it safely anywhere from 800,000 to a million. Okay. Uh, if, if they've had this many years to, to, get, to get their ducks in a row and they have not, I think that's their problem. Well, yeah. I mean, it's been around since 2000, what, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, six years. Um, Yeah. uh, You know, in its current form, but it's been around a lot longer than that in in other forms. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm, and honestly, I'm kind of biased. I'm kind of biased on the whole thing myself. Uh, I've got a son that's, it's, it's, he's in his early 30s. He's got a hernia the size of a of a potato, and I think he he was an immigrant, legal or illegal. I think he'd already been taken care of, but because he does not have insurance, he cannot he can't nobody will do anything for him. Period. Well, you know I, there are personal anecdotes like that all over the place, and it's sad. It, it's truly sad when the U.S. government helps others before they help their own. I, I mean, I've I've been screaming this for years. You know, don't talk to me about more refugees. Don't talk to me about sending more money overseas until there's no U.S. veteran living under a bridge uh, in need of psychological or, or, or physical uh, assistance uh, until there's no U.S. vet standing in a soup line. Don't talk to me about bringing other folks over. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Listen, I appreciate well, I, the the call very, very much. Um, you know, your, his original question is: Could uh, um, DACA people file unemployment, uh, standing in uh, you know, uh, get an unemployment check? Well, 
there are ways that that can happen, especially in California. Um, but they got to meet some pretty strict uh, criteria. Um, I mean, it's it's not something that, you know, if if you're not a U.S. citizen, can you still file an unemployment claim? Well, if you were working legally, the key word legally when you lost your job, are legally allowed to take a new job or meet the other requirements, um, illegal aliens or immigrants working without legal permission cannot get unemployment benefits. Um, so they probably wouldn't apply, I wouldn't think, or maybe some would, who knows. All right, you ready to go to, oh, wait a minute, do I have another uh, vote? I have one more vote. Uh, James in Corsicana, is that it? James, thanks for waiting. How you doing, James? Good afternoon, Mr. Roberts. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. I just wanted to put my two cents in there. I'm kind of on the on the fence with this whole issue. I'm an immigrant to America. I've been here 27 years, did it the legal way, filed in my foreign country, gave me 90 days to come to America, and I did that. Uh, in the 80s, when South Africa wouldn't let us leave with any money, the government seized all our money. So we came here with basically nothing. Worked hard, the American dream, never asked the American government for a penny, never expected it, never been on welfare. Like you said, immigrants can't get those when you're a permanent resident or a resident alien until you become a citizen. That being said, I've, I've worked hard. I've employed countless American citizens through my, my businesses and put food on the table for a lot of Americans. I married an American woman, um, got three stepchildren. My stepdaughter at 17 fell pregnant, not what we were expecting in our senior year in high school. Ended up having a child, my two-year-old grandson, best thing ever happened to me. The father is a DACA recipient. Now, I've always been an advocate that illegal immigration is wrong. You do it the right way like I had to do, and it's not going to be easy. It's a privilege to live in this country. Right. Not a God-given right or anything. But now I have a grandchild with this young man, does not want to break the law. He's been doing everything he can. He's filed for his renewal. It cost him $750 during the whole campaign. There is this fear with these poor people whether they're going to get kicked out of the country or not. So I do believe if they're here breaking the law, they should be sent home. But if they're here in you know, good faith, they're doing, they're obeying the laws and, and doing and wanting to be part of the society, I think they should be allowed to stay. So there is a vetting process that I think needs to be taken into consideration for these people. All right. All right. Uh, did you get that down, David? Um, so everything's going out, uh, going okay for your family now? It's going well, but like we say, it's still up in the air. You know, you, when you're an immigrant in America, you always got this uh, feeling that you could get deported any day, like you say, for a misdemeanor or somebody assaults you and gets into a fight and you defend yourself, you could end up in law, in a court of law and found guilty. And, and not only that, you could also get deported. So, I mean, a lot of Americans don't understand that most immigrants that live in the United States are probably your most law-abiding citizens because they always have that fear of being deported. Right, right. You know, I mean, there's always that fear. So, you know, a lot of people call in and they say, well, they're here just breaking the law and getting all these benefits. That's not the truth. I mean, most immigrants in America love this country. They would die for this country. They've given up more than most people would even could even imagine to be part of the society. But these children, it wasn't their fault. They, their parents brought them here. Their parents are wrong for bringing them here. But we had a president that passed the law, and these children fell into that law. Like I was saying, if they're breaking the law, get them out. Get them out tomorrow. But if they haven't broken the law and they're trying to be part of the society of this wonderful country, then they should be allowed to stay. Well, I, I will say this, uh, James. Um, my bigger problem or with the people that broke the law and have no desire to assimilate into our culture. They have no desire to be an American. They have no desire to do uh, anything lawful. Uh, they work uh, under uh, under the shadows. They live in the shadows. And, of course, the Democrats will tell you, well, they, you know, they hunger to be Americans. But given the opportunity, uh, they don't want to be Americans. They want to take your money. Right. And, and I go... I use San Diego as a prime example. At any given time during the day or night, you can pick up thousands of illegals 
that are in San Diego for one reason, make money, go back home to their homes, which are not too bad, in Mexico. Um, I agree with you 100%, sir. I, I mean, I'm not saying I'm an advocate for giving everybody amnesty. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I agree with you 100%. But right. it is a we're a fine line we're drawn here, and I, like I said, I mean, I don't know. Just because it's in my backyard, I if you had sure. asked me this three years ago, I would have said, "Get a butts out of here!" And, and you know, I don't care. <laughs> well, but you know, now it's in my backyard. You personal know? <laughs> circumstance has a way of uh, of filtering what you go through, doesn't it? Exactly. Yes, sir. It sure does. James, I appreciate the call. All the best to your family. 416 the time. I promise I'm going to get you out to L.A. and then take your response. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. All right. Uh, got a couple more votes here. Is that it? And then we'll, uh, we're going to shut it down because I want to take you to L.A. Uh, let's go to Mike in Durant. I'm assuming that's Durant, Oklahoma. How you doing, Mike? Doing well. Thank you. And that uh, you are correct. Oh, well, good. What's going on? Home. Well, uh, my belief is that the DACA recipients are victims of circumstances from two opposing forces. Their parents trying to find a better life, and then we have a country that failed to pursue any sort of uh, resolution as it relates to how to manage the income influx of these uh, people. And I know they got here illegally. But I think if we, as a country, establish a way to vet these uh, people through a process to give them a path to citizenship, they'll be some of our best citizens, I suspect, most of them. And at the same time, though, we need to do this under the cloak that the same moral obligation we try to raise our children under, which is when we make a mistake, we own it. And as a country, we've made a mistake, Rick. We have failed to do what was necessary to try to get this rectified a long time ago. These these kids, and I say kids, and I know they're adults now, came here as children, and we've allowed two decades or more of time to pass before we've decided to, ironically, the Democrats making it a, a subject as they want more voters. However, it may work as a whole if we can build, as our friend in Temple said, to build consistency, and I think now is the time for us to do it as a country, build consistent rules, hold ourselves accountable for the mistakes we made in the past, and help people who really don't have a home because they've been here for two decades and they're not citizens of any country. Well, I think the thing that you said that resonates with me more than anything else, and I've tried to teach you know my kids that, when you make a mistake, you own it, um, and then you try to fix it. Uh, we made a mistake at several different levels uh, with the DACA people. Uh, the most severe was electing, uh, you know, uh, the wrong president. Uh, Agreed. W- which, uh, which, you know, I don't know how you go back and fix that. I think Trump has done what he can do as far as unwinding that thing uh, with executive orders. But uh, as I've said consistently, I'm not nearly as concerned with DACA as far as a threat to, to my family or my country as I am, you know, the 11 to 20 million I know nothing about. And if, you know, quite honestly, if the if the nation's capital can't figure out what to do with DACA, how are they ever going to broach the topic of those 11 to 20 million people living here illegally and some of them pretty bad guys? And I think to that end, if they build a path of citizenship for the DACA recipients, that a subset of what can come out of that is a resolution for those who haven't registered for DACA, who know they're here illegally, and we draw a line in the sand that says by this point, if you're not registered and you haven't allowed to, been allowed to vet you, you are here illegally, and we will deport you immediately. Yeah. I think this is the point where we can draw the line and correct our mistake of the past. Mike, very, very good call. I appreciate you've thought this out, and I appreciate that. Um All right, Uh, I've got to stop at some point, uh, or I could continue this on for eight hours or more. And I want to take you to Los Angeles when we come back from the news uh, and let you hear what the Women's March, or I'll be honest with you, if I didn't know it was a a Women's March, I would have thought it was another protest against Trump, but you'll hear what I'm talking about. All right, give me the tally. How many calls for 
DACA, how many calls against? Okay, we had 17 calls to keep them, and we had 42 calls that they need to go back home. Okay, so 17 keep DACA, 42 against. That's correct. All right. All right. Do you want the reasons? Some of the reasons yeah, that we me, haven't highlighted yet? Yeah, give me a couple. Uh, birthright, birthrights. The parents weren't legal, so they, sh- they, they shouldn't stay here. One of them, which I really didn't agree with, is they have to join the military or do some kind of public service. Well, we have DACA people in the military. Not a huge number, but some of them are. And, you know, they'll gain citizenship status when they're discharged honorably. But it was like if they, once they graduate high school, they right. automatically have to go in. Right. One lady said it's the Christian thing to do to keep them here. And one said we have to end chain migration. All right. So, again, uh, we took uh, the number of calls. 17 of your calls were for DACA. 42 of your calls were against DACA. Um, all right. Well, we'll see what the Senate does, if they do anything. Have they turned the lights back on or have they gone back there? See, nobody knows, really, what what what's going to happen with this vote. Um We've we've got some recording devices up on uh, the nation's capital. Can we can we drop in and hear what they're doing right now? Is that possible? No, I guess not. Yeah, there they are, hey, ladies and gentlemen, the Senate of the United States. Uh, on a serious note, uh, a man I knew um, and probably didn't glean enough information from when I had the opportunity, uh, John Coleman. Uh, has passed away at his home in Las Vegas. Uh, he was, uh, I think he was in his 80s or so. He was the co-founder of the Weather Channel and uh, Good Morning America's original meteorologist. Uh, was in uh, the broadcast business for 60 years. Um, drew a lot of criticism here of late. As a matter of fact, you heard him on the show uh, not too long ago. Uh, his criticism uh, about climate change being man-made. He was the guy that was totally against uh, climate change, uh, global warming, global cooling, whatever it is that, uh, you know, uh, the uh, <laughs> the sky is falling, people. That, you know, no, you can't use plastic bags. No, we can't drive our cars. No, you know, everybody wear sackcloth and walk to work. Um, John was a very knowledgeable man, and I appreciated all the uh, information he was able to give me. So John Coleman. Found or a co-founder of the Weather Channel, and uh, Good Morning America's original meteorologist uh, has passed away, and um, he will be missed. All right, we're going to step aside very quickly. Clayton Neville is standing by in the WBAP newsroom. The very latest breaking news. We'll check your afternoon drive, and then, and then I'm going to take you to Los Angeles for the Women's March on Saturday and get your response. Maybe, just maybe, this could be a little bit of the problem we're dealing with in America. All right, uh, 4.33 the time. Glad you're along the court of public opinion. All right, everybody knows about the women's march that occurred um, uh, this past weekend on Saturday. Uh, They were in Dallas, they were in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, uh, all over the place. Um, And silly me, I just assumed since it was called a women's march, it would be a march primarily concerning itself with uh, women's rights and women's issues and laws and so on and so forth. Well, for those of uh, you that don't know Austin Fletcher, he also goes by the name Flecka on YouTube. Uh, And you know how much I love men on the street. What I want you to do, because you are the barometer for common sense, or at least the vast majority of you are the barometer for common sense. Now, again, this is a national movement happening in every major city um, called the women's. You be the judge. Are these people doing themselves or women in general, any favors, and could this, could this just possibly be? Now, I'm not saying it is. I'm asking, could this possibly be just even in a small, minuscule type way a reason for the problems we're facing in this country? All right? So Austin Fletcher is responsible for this, also known known as Flecka on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I present to you the Women's March. Hey guys, it's Fleckus. This week, we're at the Women's March. Who am I here with? Uh, Tom. Hello, Tom. Tom, what brings you here today? Uh, to protest Trump. Very cool. And uh, what are you protesting Trump for? Uh, you know, he's a conservative. I don't like conservatism. Basically, everything right. that he stands I thought on it was a, a platform, women's march. to be honest. What about you? What do you disagree with, with Trump so far? Well, I worked for a tribe for a lot of time, so about five years, so a lot of negativity towards the tribes. Um, I'm not down with that. Tribes? Also, uh, you know, just the bullshit. What is like, the number one reason that everyone's here? the last here? time you heard somebody from a tribe say, I'm um, not down with that. Okay. Uh, who am I here with? Margaret. Nat. Well, what brings you here today? Um, everything. <laughs> All right, very cool. Favorite shirt of the day so far. What does it say? Uh, single taken or dismantling heteronormativity. What? I can't see the rest. Yeah. I do see a lot of great people here who do feel empowered, but you don't have to be empowered by hating other people, by hating ah, people sure that don't, do. don't agree with you politically, by hating the president. To me, that's not true empowerment. That's weakness in disguise of empowerment. I got ahead of people because of my position as a white male. I think that the people that need to stand up are people that have the power to say something, like myself. And I think that's what's going to help change things. So many creative people, tens of thousands of amazing what? signs. Imagine if we took that Idiots creative Idiots Anonymous? Is that what that was? Things, and we like built an ark or built a spaceship. We could probably be on Mars by now if we took this energy and put it towards something very productive. Uh, what does your sign say? It says, kill Donald Trump, and then it says, kill Mike Pence, and then it says, it's guillotine time, bitches. I probably wouldn't want to go on a ship built by the people here if the plan was to head to Mars, but I do know what you mean. What, is, uh, what does it mean? And I think that we should kill Donald Trump, and then we should also kill Mike Pence because I wouldn't want him in office either. What are some of the racist things he's done that makes you concerned about him being the president? I mean, the fact that he's done, he's like repealed all these um, protect, uh, um, um, uh, um, you know, sort of stuff that's supposed to protect on, immigrants you know. in this country. Um, it's like so hypocritical too, um, and. Uh, I mean, we need any immigration reform, though. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to. I don't know. I don't want to speak know. on that. I, don't, I have no <laughs> idea. When it comes to the two candidates, obviously one was very establishment, one was an outsider. Do you think the Can outsider candidate might be something no. that we need? It might be the change the government needs. No, I don't. I don't. I'm not against an outsider know. per se, uh, but I don't think that because you're an outsider, therefore you're qualified. What, what do you think makes Trump very unqualified? Oh, he's never been president. But this is the president oh. of the United States. This is someone who needs to think oh, I see. like a diplomat, not an angry white man. I'm not here to support like somebody's like capitalist, like, like trying like, to make money off of the struggles of women and like women like, of color and like, like people of color in this country. Like I'm like I'm actually upset. Like I'm like, what is like your ideal political or social structure? Um communist utopia but i mean that's like that's pretty hard to that's pretty yeah, hard that's to pretty do hard when it comes to trump in his first year uh what have you what do you think about what he's done so far he hasn't done anything in my opinion as a business <laughs> owner the tax cut really just does enough to uh, oh, it, it, honestly it, it it doesn't matter <laughs> the economy he's is kind of irrelevant i mean the, the stock market was increasing before he came in uh there's some ah, yes and what and then the the, the the graphs are going like this oh, no, no it wasn't I've, been, I've, I've got my full pension invested and it's probably made what 30 percent this year i'm sure it's been increasing for the last five years it's but it's ever faster than it has recently general, the most recent it's a 17 year high moron oh, everyone's sorry. been very kind but mm. i have to be I'll honest be here. this is not a woman's march it is a pro democrat pro obama pro kamala harris pro cory booker pro obama strongly anti-trump uh planned parenthood support group rally march uh it's just not a woman's march because it's only if you watch CNN and MSNBC and believe the Democrats, it's it's a march for women and men who do that. But uh, get get women the same equal pay. Come on, that's a, a no brainer. I think the biggest thing that rings to me and a lot of these women out here, especially uh, the ones that are interested in the economy, is the fact that women are paid uh, drastically less by the dollar than than men are. 
And I mean, that's that's just ask out Hillary by statistics. People. We do not it, make far knows. less than men. M the majority of women, a lot of them, quite frankly, stay home. You know, they take on the hardest job there is, and that's being an at-home wife and mother. You know, there's different women who do different works and different things. So the whole idea that we're somehow at a disadvantage to men is ridiculous. But when it comes to the wage gap. 77 cents to the dollar comes from median income for men versus median income for women. Doesn't account for the type of job, doesn't account for part time or full time, doesn't account for hours worked, doesn't account for degrees, doesn't account for a lot of different things that actually do play factors. If an employer wanted to save money, wouldn't they just hire women and pay them at the lower rate? That's f they, they, Everyone should get paid the same. Shit. If you're doing the same job, you should get the same pay. It doesn't Have matter. Have you seen any of the counters that say the pay, the pay wage gap is kind of a myth? What? Well, f if there's anything, the difference between pay wage, look at the pay between CEOs and the people that are doing all the f***ing work. Obviously, I mean, that's English true, major but there. The CEOs yeah. are also taking on the risk and running the company, and you're getting paid whether the company makes money or not, right? I'm an archaeologist for a, a tribe, and, you know, the tribal voice needs to be heard as well. What are some things that are um, happening with the tribes that you want to want to share? I don't think that they're being treated equally. They're being, you know, let down. And they were first, the first people here being a native myself, you know? Native what? What are some of the ways they're being let down or like what we can do to help them? Um, what do you think of the sh comment? He's gotta go, that's all. It's just, he doesn't, re he doesn't reflect us. He doesn't reflect Los Angeles. We should definitely try to be kinder to each other, but actions definitely matter more than words. Absolutely. Some would say True. words are just words until action actually starts because actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. <laughs> words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, but at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes oh, it's the right Lord. thing to do. John, overpass. February 4th. I'm supposed to interview you. They're not touching the mic. The Democratic Party, liberal women, and this type of women's march, you don't own women. You don't own people of color. You don't own black people or Latinos or Asian people. You don't have a monopoly on people's race, and you certainly don't have a monopoly on people's genders. As long as everyone understands that and understands that you can be a woman, you can be an activist, you can be a, a good person of any race, religion, and gender, uh -huh. and not support all of these policies that they're kind of force-feeding people. He's not supporting women-friendly legislation. What are some of the things you're worried he would take away? Well, uh, health care, uh, reproductive yeah. rights for yeah. one, the right abortion. to abortion. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Do you think that's something that the government funds should be going to, a place that does do abortions, Planned Parenthood? Um, Planned Parenthood doesn't just do abortions. That's, that's the number one money maker, though. No, no, it's... It is, it is. Yeah, everyone I know that I've talked to has used their services, none of them had an abortion. Okay. That's like a, such a small group of people to make a whole judgment on. I can give you the numbers. They do, Planned Parenthood does a third of the country's abortions. They make the most money that they make from abortions. Of their services. And that 3% number. You're lying. I'm about to correct you. That 3% number counts every interaction with a medical person as a service. So if you go in there and get an STD test or go in there and get an abortion, it's counted as the same thing. That's why that number is misleading. Uh, and of course, the anti-abortion side would have you believe that it's murder of babies, which is not true. I am a mother, and if that's your body and your baby and you have to do what's right, it's like... All the way up to the third trimester, like the week before it's born? That's not my choice. That's not my choice. It's the woman's choice. This is an iconic image now. It's the woman in the uh, American flag hijab, correct? Um, is this alluding to something that's going on in Iran, the protests in Iran? Is that part of the same thing? No. It's the comments that the current president has made <laughs> about Muslims. You notice all these movements lead right back to the Democratic Party. It's like, we care about race, gender, and we own you and vote Democrat. It's like, what? <laughs> this all happened so fast. I was, I loved women. Next thing you know, I'm, uh, I'm in the booth voting for Cory Booker, even though he sold out to the pharmacy industries and squandered $100 million that were supposed to go to Newark schools. What happened to that, Mr. Booker? Mr. Booker, do you think that um, using the hijab in an image like this would almost incite a bad feeling within like the Muslim community and Muslim women who are oppressed by the hijab? Um, so obviously I'm not Muslim, so I feel like I can't, I can't speak for Muslim women. But I did take a Middle Eastern Studies class ah, this past semester, and one of the things I learned expert. is that the hijab um, really got a negative image from um, white colonists. 
Another Fuck Us Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, oh. all the good stuff. There is a new Fuck Us Talks coming soon. Okay, I love that guy. I love him a lot. Okay, well, now I know everything that I didn't know about the Women's March. All right? Now I, now I understand it totally. I get it. You know, I'm in touch with my feminine side now. I, I All makes sense. I should have known. Your response, 1-800-288-WBAP. Don't you feel more enlightened? Don't you feel you have been just, it just washes over you like a warm rain, doesn't it? All the intelligence. Okay. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Man, I'm sorry I missed that. I really am. All right, at 4.49 the time, this is Brenda in Little Elm. Beautiful, beautiful little town. Brenda, how are you? Linda, not Brenda. I'm sorry, um, it's what? Linda. L-I-C-D. Linda, Linda. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, I just get so upset listening to those crazy people out and about. And, and the woman with the like and the like and the like, she needs to learn English. If you can't speak without using like every other word there's something wrong with you first of all what's wrong with us is we took we took everything out of school that i mean do they even say the pledge of allegiance anymore the what I'm a woman. The, the what pledge of allegiance well isn't that like really old uh, yeah it's like really old <laughs> and and we don't like pray anymore um and I'm sorry, these women have a right to hate Trump, but I don't think they have a right to say kill Trump. To me, that is uh, like saying, like, you know, let's, like, let's assassinate the man. Yeah, like kill the dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm with uh, you, I mean, Brenda. If that's, uh, if that's representative of what was out in the streets on Saturday all across the nation, we got a bigger problem than D.C., Oh, oh mercy, oh mercy, <laughs> and and somebody needs to take it back to church and, and say the pledge of allegiance at the same time. But I wish there was something they could do about these people that are saying kill the president. What do you think would have happened if somebody said kill Obama? Yeah, you're right. You're right, Brenda. You, I appreciate the call very much. Uh, let's go to Lori in Dallas. Lori, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Lori? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Rick? Uh, I'm, I'm like, really good. <laughs> um, first of all, I do not understand a single thing that those women were standing up for. I just, you know, the girl who said that it was somebody's body a week before. Yeah, that's basically legalized born. murder, isn't it? Is a, Hey, what do you I, think about oh. that guy that killed those people? Well, uh, I'm not like, I'm not him. Oh, it just. They're ridiculous. They need to learn how to be women again. Yeah, Lori, yeah. who's going to teach them? That's the main thing. Well, you know, parents can. Yeah, well, I said it somewhere yeah. during that whole thing. You know, who 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 is raising these people? How do they get to that point? I absolutely do not because, first of all, if my child was to get on a phone and say that they wanted to kill the president, I'd probably knock them into the middle of next week to start with it's and, crazy uh, it's nuts and to say that it's okay to have an abortion a week i just if that's what their movement is for god help us all amen to that Lori. i appreciate the call very much cinda cinda thanks for waiting how you doing cinda oh well i was fine until i started listening to those ignorant people i I have never in my life been so enraged grown people that you think should have some type of intelligence to to call abortion a woman doesn't have a right she has a right not to have sex if she doesn't want a child and then you know the last caller she was so she hit it right on lord help us if people cannot, it, you know, they just can't control their, their ignorance, their mouth. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was something. It was, uh, that is hate. You know, I don't, I'm not even sure if they know it's hate. I, I mean, they are so oblivious to what's going on around them 
if you don't like the president, I get that. You don't call right. you don't call for him to be killed. You don't call for babies to be killed a, a week before delivery. I, I mean, I I don't have a clue what the, I don't even think they knew why they were there. You know, and none of them could say why they felt like they did. It's because Susie told them something, so they just believe it. Yeah, I mean, they like have- Cinda, like this is like been a great like call. Uh, Cinda, I appreciate the call. My apologies to those of you uh, still on hold. Man, I'm just simply out of time. I need another hour, don't I? <laughs> Everybody in the support crew is going, no, no, don't do that. Listen, God's blessings to each and every one of you, whether we agree or not, is always my priority. Maybe that's the only way to get uh, D.C. straightened out. Try to get all these knuckleheads into church at one time. Couldn't hurt. I'm Rick Roberts. I'll be with you tomorrow at 2, your afternoon drive, 2 to 5. Stick around. Yeah, it's, it's, we're not through, not by a long shot. It's, uh, I just had a brain freeze. Who's behind me? Of course, Mark Levin, he's up next. Man, I got to lay off this energy tape. Um, see you tomorrow at 2. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. The only way I know. I'll get out of what's